Speaking of which, wellness and from a player and from a community perspective, um, obviously we've all become more and more reliant on screens um, and there's kind of like a, almost like a conflict of interest there for some companies. Um, how do we make sure that we have an engaged community, but at the same time, how do we do this in a healthy way, especially when you're talking about underage uh, kids, when you're talking about minors, um, you know, parents, how, where do they fit into this? How can we empower them to take ownership or have visibility of what's happening? So with this whole rise of, of screen time, and digital wellness, uh, what can companies do in order to contribute on promoting a healthier uh, gaming environment and gaming habits among their players? Yeah, I can think of, think of a couple of things that, uh, that stand out here. Um, one is, um, let's say, educational resources. As a gaming company, you have the responsibility to educate your players and parents as well on, let's say, what responsible behavior is. You can't just throw a game out there and, um, and actually um, uh, um, encourage people to play all day long, right? So a gaming company has a social responsibility there as well. And they should communicate that um, to, let's say, their players. And, and if you talk about underage, uh, an underage crowd. Um, the other thing, um, when you talk about underage players, are parental controls. So it's extremely important to make sure that parents actually have the ability to monitor what their kids are doing in the game, the ability for them to reach out to the game company to ask questions. Um, there was a, a very interesting session that I attended uh, by Mojang Studios, the, the company behind Minecraft. Um, of course, Minecraft, an extremely popular game, um, huge underage player base. Um, and the issue that they had um, was that there's a huge amount of servers that people can play on, but those servers weren't, let's say, structured or published anywhere or vetted that, that um, let's say, that they're safe for kids. So what they did together with a company called Gamer Safer is set up the official Minecraft server list. Um, and each server owner can apply to be part of that list, but they have to comply with specific requirements when it comes to, let's say, how do they uh, treat the community? Um, they can earn badges for, for taking, let's say, more proactive measures. Um, once they're in that dedicated server list, um, then players and, and including children can look for a server that fits their profile when it comes to other players, when it comes to, let's say, the type of communication that's happening in the community in that server. Um, so it makes that initiative makes it easier for players and, and especially underage players to find a server that really fits their needs. And at the same time, parents also have the ability to reach out to the server owner, ask questions, take a look at, let's say, everything that's happening in that server, who is there. Um, so that's a great example of where, let's say, parental controls and in general, um, um, giving players the option to be very conscious about where they play and who they play with um, can really contribute to um, the wellness of your players, but also the safety of the community.